What's up guys? Welcome back to Gil's Garage. Today we're going to end up cutting the old lower quarter panels off and welding in the new ones. So without wasting a bunch of time, let's go ahead and hop right into it. Alright guys, so whenever you get your panel, you're going to go ahead and kind of line it up where the current lower quarter panel is. Get an idea of where it lines up at, somewhere around in here. And then you're going to go ahead and take a piece of tape and mark that out to where it's in about the same area. So for this, it was about right, about right here. And then coming down, I think it was about in this area. So now you're going to put this back on here, get it exactly where you want it to be. Kind of hold it tight then you're going to go ahead and take a marker and you're going to mark out on that tape exactly where the new fender is so you know exactly where you want to cut Alright, so now that you got that done, you have a perfect line of where you want this fender to be cut out at. That way this one will fit up perfectly. You'll be able to weld it right in without having to alter the new fender or try to mess with this a whole lot. Okay guys, so for cutting, I like to use just a die grinder with a cutting wheel on it. Uh, it's pretty easy to stay precise and uh, if you use one of the really big grinders with a cutting wheel, it just doesn't work out very well. So let's uh, go ahead and start cutting away at this and hopefully it turns out well. Okay, so I kind of figured before I go ahead and cut it all the way down here, I should probably make sure to check that the replacement lower quarter panel is actually stamped out to the exact same size of the original lower quarter panel. And I think I noticed whenever it's kind of lined up against here that the original quarter panel actually wraps around towards the back and this one actually stops halfway in the middle. So I think what I'm going to end up doing is cutting the original quarter panel kind of along the seam of where this would end up meeting it at. So instead of uh, undoing it from the spot welds up here, I'm just going to go ahead and trace it out like I did up here and go ahead and just cut that and probably make it look better in the long run. All right guys, so I went ahead and traced over the other markings with a more permanent marker because it would really suck to start cutting it and wiping off the markings that I did put on there. Um, another good rule of thumb is whenever you don't have a very precise line and you know exactly where the new panel is going to meet up with the original part of the body, um, it's better to go ahead and kind of cut a little bit less off because it would be better to spend five hours trying to, you know, cut uh, a perfect line then to you know hurry up and rush through it and just hack it all up and end up having to weld in a quarter inch of metal. So just a fun fact of the day for you. We're going to go ahead and cut this out and then try to get the uh, spot welds out and hopefully this thing comes off very easily.
so normally what you're supposed to do is either grind out or drill out the spot welds. But this metal is just so rusted and deteriorated, I'm just going to go ahead and cut it out. Uh, because I'm going to have to replace the metal anyway, so there's not really any sense in trying to save any of it. So without talking a whole lot more, let's go ahead and start cutting stuff away. Okay, so after uh, pulling out half of Little Sahara with us, we just went ahead and chopped this off right at the seam. It turned out a lot better than I thought it would, honestly, but as you can see behind here, it's just completely rusted. Uh, so we're just going to have to cut out the areas that are basically unfixable and probably just weld in a new piece of plate or something. So let's uh, go ahead and get back to it. Okay guys, so last night I ended up putting 415 rust inhibitor on the rusted part of the panel just to neutralize the rust and keep it from spreading and I cleaned it up and now I'm going to go ahead and get some self etching primer and throw it on the bare metal areas. That way it seals the metal and whenever I put this new panel on I'm not going to have to worry about it rusting behind the new metal panel. So without uh, talking too much more, let's go ahead and get this painted. Alrighty guys, so now that the car is basically ready to go, we're going to go ahead and prep this piece a little bit by grinding the paint off all the areas that need to be welded at. And then we are going to tack it up to the car, make sure everything fits right, and we are going to slowly weld specific areas at a time to make sure that the panel doesn't warp any. So without uh, wasting a whole lot more time, let's go ahead and hop right to it.
Okay guys, now that we got the new panel welded on and we went ahead and grinded all the welds smooth, we're going to take a DA sander with 80 grit sandpaper, we're going to sand everything down and get rid of the grind marks. That way we can start prepping this panel to put some self-etching primer on there to really seal the metal so we don't have to worry about it rusting over time. So let's hop right into it. Alrighty guys, now that we got the self-edging primer on there and it is nice and cured, we're going to scuff it up with 150 grit sandpaper and get everything ready to go ahead and put body filler on it so we can sand that smooth and get this part of the panel finished. So, now that this is finally dry, what I normally do to break down the high areas is just take a DA sander with like 80 or 150 grit sandpaper and just kind of go over the areas that are pretty high and you're not going to really need to blend in anywhere. And then I'm going to grab the block sander and really smooth it out well before I put the metal glaze over it. Okay guys, so just like we continue to do every time we get ready to apply anything to the panel, I want to go ahead and take some grease and wax remover and clean this all off before I put some metal glaze on it to really just even everything out and sand it perfectly smooth. Alright, now all we do is sit back for about 20 minutes and let this dry out completely. This finally dried, and a quick fun fact whenever it comes to using metal glaze over this stuff, you really want to press in with whatever you're using to make sure that you get a really good seal with it, and you want to try to apply it as smoothly as you can, that way you'll probably have a better outcome. Okay guys, so just like earlier, we're going to take the sanding block with 150 grit sandpaper and smooth metal glaze out, and then we're going to hop up to 320 grit sandpaper to get all the scratches out, that way it's ready to have filler sprayed on.
Okay guys, well that is all sanded and basically ready to get primed. So I'm going to go ahead and sweep everything up and clean this panel and we're going to throw some filler on it and then sand it smooth and put some sealer on it. Okay, now that we got the floor swept up, we're going to go ahead and clean this panel off with some wax and grease remover. Then we're going to do a few light coats of primer and after that we can hop on over to the other side.
All right guys, that's gonna to have to wrap it up for this video. We finally got both lower quarter panels changed out. In the next video, we're gonna be doing a lot more sanding to the body so we can get everything primed and get it ready for paint. So make sure to stick around, like, subscribe, and I'll see you guys next time.